Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So as I've progressed further and further along in my small engine repair endeavors, I noticed that I was missing a piece of equipment that could help me in tuning some of these lawn mowers and snow blowers and anything with a small engine just to be running that much more efficiently. I am going to do a quick review on a tachometer that I picked up on Amazon. It was one of the cheapest ones out there, so hopefully it's not too bad. I read some of the reviews, it's pretty good. I'll throw a link to it uh, in the description. But one way that you'll find these tachometers are really helpful is in a scenario like this. So this is my Aaron's Compact 22 snow thrower, and it's currently repowered with a Predator engine. So it used to have a Subaru Robin on it. I ran it without oil because I didn't put a sign on it a couple of seasons ago and kind of just blew up, but got it repowered, no big deal. But as I was starting it up, I noticed the engine was running a little bit slow, the snow wasn't being thrown as far as I'd like it to be, and then we go ahead and just play with the throttle back and forth, but I have it where I like it, but it sounds like it might be going a little too high and I want to just make sure that I'm not overstressing the machine here itself. So. What we'll do is we'll crack open this tachometer, we'll see what our specs are in terms of engine RPMs for the snow thrower, and just make sure that we are completely aligned. So we'll go ahead, get you on a stand, and show you what we got. So taking a quick look, that is the number on the barcode that I got this guy on Amazon for. That's the box, fairly small, but for a small engine, I'm not anticipating anything too crazy. So. Go ahead and open this guy up. Let's see. We have a tachometer right there. We have our lead wire there as well. And inside we also have looks like some 3M adhesive double-sided tape if you want to attach it to a machine, as well as a zip tie and a set of instructions. So um, this thing is sealed, so when the battery dies on it, you're just going to get a new one, but cost is fairly cheap, that shouldn't be that big of an issue anyway. And since we're only using it for diagnostic work and not as an actual hour meter, we can go ahead and prolong the life of this battery. So I will get you on a stand by the machine, show you what our adjustments are going to be, and how to set this guy up in order to take accurate readings for engine speeds. So on our machine, you can see that our throttle lever is that metal lever that you see right on top of there. And that is connected down here to this armature. So throttle down, we go there, throttle up, we go that way. And you'll see that we have a screw right in here that prevents our throttle from going any higher. So right now, that's kind of where our stop is. What I'm going to do is I'm going to be loosening that screw or tightening it to move it down there either in or out. The further out we go with the screw, the further that this lever can move to the left and that increases our overall throttle for max throttle. If I find that we're running a little too high, I will push the screw in a little bit, effectively reducing our throttle like that. So. That's the main adjustment we're going to be doing. Let's get you on the side and show you how to connect up our tachometer. On the side of the engine here, you can see our spark plug wire going into our cylinder head. And what we're going to do is take our tachometer with all this wiring right here. And the instructions call for five to six loops around this spark plug wire. And those pulses of electricity will end up going across these guys and feeding to our tachometer. So I'll go ahead, wrap this cord around here uh, five or six times approximately, set it up, and then we should be ready to start our engine and see what kind of RPMs we're making. Okay. I'll throw a seventh loop just to be safe, just in case one of these guys tries to come undone. Oh, 
and tuck this under here just so it doesn't start flying away on us. So we'll see how that goes and I'll get you set up somewhere. Okay so we have our wire coming up here. I figured I'd just set you up over here on the handles where hopefully it won't be shaking too much and we'll get an initial reading. So as you can see, we were running about 34, 3500 RPM. Now our manual with the original Subaru engine called for a running RPM of around 3600 RPMs, plus or minus about 100. And that's typical for all small engine applications. So we are running a little bit slow, so I will back out that screw slightly in order for us to reach our 3600 RPM target. So I'll try to get everything on camera. But essentially, this screw right down here, I'm going to be loosening so that way we can increase our engine RPM. So go ahead, give it another go. Put a little choke back on. Okay, so as you can see, we got it to 3,500 RPMs. It's hard to kind of juggle everything, but I didn't want to take it any higher because it already sounds like this machine is going fast enough as it is. So let's uh, keep it at 3,500. We're still within spec of being plus or minus 100 off that 3,600 number. So I think we're pretty good. So overall, what's the purpose of this guy? Why do you need to get one if you're working on small engines? Well, it's just to ensure that you're operating within normal specifications for that piece of equipment. Uh, specifically on generators, I know as you dial up the power, you end up making more volts, and you wanna make sure that you are producing safe outputs for those guys. So generators, another way it's handy. Also with lawnmowers and any other small equipment, if you feel like it's not having enough power or it's not doing the job as effectively as you think it should be doing, um, the idle or the maximum RPM set screw might just be off a little bit and you can use this tool to adjust it to make sure that you're within specification and performing at the required power output for your needs. So hope this video is helpful. Overall, I feel okay with it. I haven't had too much experience with uh, engine tax for small engines, so I feel like this one did a good job. I do feel from an auditory perspective that the engine was running a little bit fast, even though we didn't really hit 3600 RPM, so that might just be my ears needing calibration, or potentially this thing needs calibration. So let me know what you guys think if you go typically by ear and you kind of know how fast the engine is running. or if you think that a tool like this will be good for your arsenal. So I want to thank you guys for hanging out with me. And with that, we'll catch you in the next one.